<clears throat> All right, ladies and gentlemen, good evening today in our IIHM Career Studio. We've got another personality on the hot seat. He is Mr. Kush Kapoor, CEO, Rosier Hotels and Resorts. And today, we are going to discuss with him and chat about careers in hospitality. And of course, as a general manager, what he looks when he sits on the opposite side of the table, recruiting people, so that all of your students can start practicing and preparing to aim and to crack that management trainee level that we are talking about. But before we go forward, Mr. Kapoor, we would like to know a little bit about your background and your success story. Sure. First of all, I would like to thank everybody for giving me this opportunity to come on this platform. Uh, Double IHM has been uh, the journey of the Rosie Hotels and Resorts with Double IHM has been tremendous for the last couple of years. And all thanks to Dr. Bose Abdullah and his team. Uh, I'll, I'll make it quick, uh, probably. Uh, my story starts uh, from a very small village. It's about 150 kilometers from New Delhi. Uh, we had a joint family. One single house had about 45 members in the joint family. I was pretty lucky to be part of that joint family. Uh, grew up, born and brought up out there. Did my hotel management. I was lucky enough to get into the hotel management. I always wanted to be an army officer. But I guess that discipline of army and hotel is almost the same. So I got into that and uh, I did my IHM from IHM Hyderabad. That was in 1998. Passed out from there, was uh, lucky enough to get a job with the Oberoi's and I started my career as a room boy basically. So uh, that was first pre-opening hotel, which I had 1998. I, uh, that was uh, tried in Dudepur, was there for about nine months and I moved, uh, I was moved to another pre-opening hotel that was tried in Cochin in 2000, 1999, sorry. And again, as a room boy. So I would say I was with the O'Broy groups in the initial stages of my career for about almost 13 or 14 months, but that, uh, that made the base, uh, the housekeeping department, if I have to say, my always, uh, the, uh, the interest was in front office, but I took up this challenge because this was uh, the learning phase for me. And whenever, wherever you can learn, you should always take that on with, with yourself. Mm -hmm. So I did the housekeeping. Uh, I was a room boy, prepared the rooms, scrubbed the swimming pool, was the laundry valet, did the mini bar, flooring, rooms, everything I did. And I love that job, basically. Uh, I came back from uh, Cochin for family reasons. And I joined a hotel, which is the Manor Hotel in New Friends Colony. Yeah. One, three, which is 13 room boutique hotel. That was again a pre-opening hotel. And I joined as a food and beverage uh, steward out there. Uh, that was my another stint to learn as much as I could for food and beverage. Eight months was pretty much uh, on with that. Very exciting phase of the life. After that, I got an opportunity to move with the Taj Hotels. That was in the year 2000. And uh, I joined Taj Mahal New Delhi as a front office assistant. I uh, was there with Taj Hotels for about eight and a half years. Uh, grew up and last I left in Taj uh, from Taj as a front office manager in 2008. In between was in Taj Coromandel for about a year. Uh, I was also deputed in IHM Aurangabad for about three months to train 50 assistant managers who were brought in from all Taj Hotels to train them into the, uh, the front office part. And uh, from there, I would say I uh, moved back to the Taj and I got an opportunity to move into the... Uh, the Lira Gurgaon. The Lira Gurgaon was again a pre-opening hotel and this was for about, uh, I was there with, uh, with them for about seven years, joined them as the rooms division manager, moved up as an mm -hmm. EM accommodations and last I left from there as a resident manager of the hotel. 412 rooms, massive hotel. From there I moved uh, to Rosette Hotels and Resorts, uh, joined Rosette House as the pre-opening general manager. That was my first stint as a general manager. Wow. Uh, moved up uh, as the area general manager in about 11 months. And from there, I uh, became the CEO of the company. So I'm presently taking care of the brand as such overall. Super. I think from a 13-room boutique hotel manner to a CEO of Rosier Hotels and Resorts is quite a journey, Mr. Kapoor. And, it's you know, very exciting. A lot of things to learn, I would say. Uh, uh -huh. I, I, I mean, every, every uh, step of mine, every designation of mine taught me a lot of things. Uh, there were a lot of uh, things, times which were very exciting, I would say. Uh, but all what I can say is to all the future, uh, the general managers or the hoteliers, uh, you need to keep your options on. You need to be flexible always. Be very transparent wherever you are working with yourself always. Be very passionate. Uh, innovation is the key which we all have been hearing in today's time. Uh, you need to be innovative at every step, at every level, wherever you are. 
be innovative in whatever way you can. Uh, last but not the least, I always tell my people, be as simple as you can in whatever you are doing out there. Super. Be as simple as you can. All right. So as a general manager, you do a lot of recruitments and recruit a lot of MTs. You've got some beautiful properties, uh, I would say, all over the world. And I think the latest one, the talk of the town, is the Rishikesh Ganges. Now, before we go on to the discussion of what a student needs to do sure. who comes for an interview to crack that management trainee position, let me show you a small video, which, uh, you know, you very... Uh, pleasely and graciously send it to me, um, you know, so that we can show it to all our viewers about sure, this sure. beautiful, lovely property called the Ganges. Let's have a look at this. So, uh, if you allow me side by side, also, it's about 17 private villas what we've opened up out there. It's right in the next to the private beach what we have. The river Ganga flows throughout the year out there. You got individual private villas, handful of 17, as I said, uh, high-end luxury, but we've kept the service standards very simple. It's very, very high-end personalized service what you get when you enter into the resort out there. So that's our chef out there. So whatever you get out there is pure organic. You can actually feel the freshness of the food out there because it's all raw food what we get from there. This is, as I said, is part of the forest. So you all have, uh, this is actually uh, during the summertime, but in winters or post monsoon, you actually hardly see even the next uh, villa next to you. It's all <laughs> surrounded by trees everywhere. We, we missed a lot of your, uh, you know, voiceover while the video was on because while the video was on, uh, we couldn't hear you. But yes, we could feel uh, that you're giving, you know, uh, details about the beautiful villas that they were. Right. So as I said, it's only 17 private villas. What we have a very high-end luxury uh, brand, I would say. Uh, the only uh, thing what we've done out there, we kept the service style as simple as possible because we need to nurture the local culture. People come out there from different parts of the world and even India only to get the service and the quality, which is very, very local and very, very simple out there. Mm -hmm. That's lovely. So now coming back to the question of a beautiful property like this or the Rosette House, if somebody wants to crack as a management training, what is it that you look into? So I'll keep up. It's very simple is the attitude, I would say, for the person who's coming for the interview. Because mm -hmm. please understand, uh, anybody can train anybody in terms of a knowledge, skill, experience and everything. But attitude is one thing which would be very difficult to change in somebody. So I'll, for my suggestion, for somebody to join the hotel industry will be to make sure you love serving people, you love meeting people, you love talking to people, and you love helping people. So it's your attitude which will make or break the difference in you. Absolutely. Super. Uh, sorry, uh, if I just take one uh, thing, probably just to probably uh, help the, uh, the young aspirants, I would say all over the place. Uh, when I became a general manager about three years ago, uh, I guess I would be one of those general managers who were nobody never a graduate at that time. So I did my graduation post I became a general manager. And uh, this is about like uh, four years back I became a graduate and post that obviously I've done my uh, MBA. I've been to the Cornell University in the US because the company had obviously sponsored my trip as a, for a general manager's program. Yes. I did my master black belt in uh, Six Sigma and I've done a couple of courses already now after that. Wow. So as the point which I'm trying to put it across is keep your attitude on, keep the right attitude. That's the most important thing in whatever, wherever you're doing. Absolutely. I think that's uh, a very valid point you've made. And, uh, you know, um, the question, the next question is, you know, to become a GM. Uh, every student today who's doing hospitality he wants to aim to become a general manager of a lovely property. And and some lovely, amazing pictures you have sent me. Um, you know, the properties and, and you know, uh, so if you could just give us a brief over about this. So the first one, if you see, that's the uh, resort, which is in the Ganges, the Rishikesh Ganges is about 17 private villas with a picture only you can see it's all surrounded by the forest all around. Mm -hmm. The second picture, if you see, that's the resort, which is in New Delhi. Uh, it's, it's full of trees, I would say. That's one of the resorts in right in the center of Delhi which has more than 1,500 trees out there. 
Mm -hmm. uh, it's got the longest pool in the country, 102 meters, all surrounded by the water bodies, only 65 private uh, rooms out there, but the size of the smallest room is the, big, the biggest actually in the entire NCR Delhi. Uh -huh. uh, moving to the third one is what you see actually the, the size or the, the actual picture of the private villas in the Rishikesh Ganges. Mm -hmm. uh, moving ahead, it's mostly the pictures that are from the Rishikesh Ganges and the, the resort. So the, the, the hotels and the resort, keeping in mind that none of our hotels and resorts are similar to each other. That's one. We want to make sure the, the people, the guests who are coming to our hotels and resorts get the warmth, get the culture, get the tradition of the Indian hospitality, because that's what we are for. Super. And this is also uh, Rosyat uh, Samalka, right? <clears throat> yes, there are a couple of pictures of Rosyat Samalka also in that. Uh, so if I talk about the second picture is Rosyat Samalka. What I, as I mentioned, uh, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and the seventh picture is also of Rosyat. Uh, that's in there. That's in New Delhi. And otherwise, uh, the last picture which you see is actually the room size of the uh, resort. That's the biggest room, room what you have in the entire Delhi and wow. Amazing, amazing. All right, so coming back to the question, I mean, to in order to become a general manager of a beautiful property like this, uh, what students need to prepare for? So I would say, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, you need to have the right attitude. You need to have the attitude to serve people, meet people, uh, greet people. I always keep telling people, uh, and I know it's difficult to understand and even difficult to digest, but for me, uh, the hospitality job, if you love meeting people, if you uh, like uh, to interact with them, the hospital job is the easiest job in the world to do because what we do in the hotels is exactly what we do in our homes, mm. right? So whenever we have people coming to our house or our relatives and friends, we are always excited to ready to welcome them, prepare our house, greet them, make the best food, give them the tour of our, our house out there. When they're leaving, we give them a fond farewell. We always make sure we always love bringing them back to our hotel, sorry, mm. homes. This is actually exactly what you do in the hotels also, hotels or resorts. Mm -hmm. The point in hotels and resorts is you actually get paid for that. In your homes, you don't get paid. Yeah, absolutely. So, so that's, I mean, whatever job you're doing, you need to love your job. Super, super. So, so yeah, so there is a huge career out there in hospitality. And of course, uh, you know, that the students can explore. One advice that you would like to give Mr. Kapoor uh, to the aspirants or anybody who's wanting to get in an industry about the qualities um, you know, that one needs to possess. So first, let me just uh, dwell on the hospitality industry. Uh, I would say, obviously, we are not talking about this phase in about two, three months where we are standing right now. But you all will say moving, see moving ahead, India is going to be one of the biggest market in terms of travel and tourism in the coming years. Uh -huh. And this I'm talking about from the end of this year. Mm -hmm. uh, what we need is the quality of people. Uh, I hear a lot of talks from people that you do not get the right job, you don't get the right salary. But trust me, it's only the initial years of you which are struggling, but that's there in all the jobs. Mm -hmm. But hotel industry pays you a handsome salary once you reach that particular level, mm -hmm. or if you're that particular position in any of the hotels right now in India. Yeah, I mean, I have people, I have students from various hotel management institutes who have come from different parts of the world right now also, and they're working in my hotels. So, you know, it's an honor that people are looking to India as a destination where they want to learn the warmth the culture and the Indian tourism from the Indians out here, which in the last or probably during our time, we've never actually heard on that part. Now, coming back to your question, I would uh, probably sum it up in terms of four things. I always uh, talk about, uh, it's, a, it's a four letter alphabet, which is called as TIPS, that's T-I-P-S. Uh, <laughs> For, for students, for aspiring students, for hoteliers, please make sure for T for me stands for transparency. Whatever you're doing, wherever you're doing, whoever you're reporting to, wherever you're working, be as transparent as you can. We human beings are all human beings. We all make mistakes. If you made a mistake, please accept that. That's the easiest and the fastest way to move ahead. True. Second I stands for innovation for me, as I mentioned earlier also. You mm -hmm. need to keep on innovating whatever you're doing. I mean, I always tell people, if you have nothing to innovate, please tell me and I'll do you, give you a couple of projects where you'll have to start scratching your brains to innovate automatically on that. P for me stands for passion. As I said, whatever you're doing, you need to do it with passion. And as, as I mentioned earlier, it has to be as simple as possible. Uh, 
please understand wherever you are working whenever you are working please do not look at the chair or the designation where you are working because a chair or designation keeps changing with your job eventually you will be judged by the person by the personality as a human being not by the chair the people should not respect you of that chair they should respect you of you as a person as an individual super i think you made a fabulous point then joining in dr suborna bose chairman ceo iihm hotel school all the way from calcutta dr bose over to you hello mr kapoor is a great privilege to see you in the iihm life and thank, uh, thank you. you very much for sparing your time and speaking to us uh, so uh, obviously going through difficult times uh but i'm sure that uh, there are a lot of silver lining on the clouds and it could be like things could be um coming to uh, some kind of now and see in a, a few months from now so so what is what is what is your your way of thinking things now what do you think how many months are we looking at for of the industry to come come turn around Doctor Bose, I see life as uh, you go when you go to a hospital or you see this ECG machine. You yes. see the life that the, it goes up and down. So this is the the phase which is down. But I would say this is a resting phase for us, where if we really invested our time and energy, we would have learned immense amount of things. So what whatever things we've learned during this phase, we were all ready to pull it up. The hotel industry, I, and I would say it's next couple of days when we see the hotels and everything moving up on that part. so i see the hotel industry from next couple of weeks as i just mentioned right now also india is going to be a major tourist destination in the world starting from our industry so indians are the second largest travelers in the world right now yes. and for the next couple of months they're not going to travel abroad right so no. everything is going to happen domestically correct you will not believe the amount of queries we guys are getting right now in our hotels from the international clients because of the conferences because of the seminars what they want because everybody is looking at india as a next destination right now fantastic it it's it's quite 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 interesting i was talking to one of my friend general manager of a large hotel right uh, and uh, he was sharing that he is getting a banquet booking for november december every day true, because true. a lot of these bookings are coming Absolutely. from Either exotic destination, which is now been cancelled, like Thailand, Singapore, or somewhere else, and also a lot of cancellation, which are happening for the weddings, which are slated maybe in July or August. True, true, correct. Now we see a uh, my segment, which is more of a social function. Banqueting is going to take a good, good, massive phase the moment we open up on that part. So, so from the banqueting point of view. uh do you think that there could be uh, restrictions what do you think i mean restrictions initial phases uh, yes so they, they, i mean the government right now has given a go ahead for about 50 people but since they not allow the hotels to open up and the banks to not open up but the moment they open up uh, we going to start with 50 people as in all over the place i am talking about but this 50 people eventually is going to keep on increasing i would say interesting yes absolutely absolutely Yes, Abdullah. Yes, so we were having a chat about you know what uh, students should expect when they come to give an interview for becoming a management trainee, and of course what students need to be prepared for uh, if they aim to become a general manager. And I think Mr. Kapoor nailed it with, with all the qualities and skills that the students should be looking for, uh, and that was the chat that was happening. And in the end, all I would like to ask about. you know what you have to say about um iihm and how different is the college i mean you've been interacting you've been in this field uh, you started you know from 1998 till date so what is the difference between iihm and the other colleges uh i would say i'll have to spend the entire evening talking about that uh, <laughs> maybe we might be able to finish on the breakfast session tomorrow morning no double ihm if you ask me over the last uh, couple of years since the time i have interacted with abdullah team and dr bose it's one of the most uh, uh, i would say uh, fabulous institutes what i've seen in the country at the moment i've been to few colleges abroad in terms of the hotel management schools and colleges also but the kind of engagement what you see for the students the kind of pain what the faculty is taking to groom the students i mean hats off to the entire team starting from dr bose to abdullah and everything uh, i see them continuously engage and you know i keep talking to a lot of ihm principals in uh, in india right now and i give them an example of the double ihm the way they train people and i have been invited to for a couple of uh, seminars 
a uh, couple of uh, probably dinners I, I would say the way the students are trained the way they are groomed right now uh, i i haven't been able to match that standards with any of the hotel management institutes in india as on date on that part so i see them moving two steps further to any of the existing colleges in india or even the colleges abroad the way the students uh, and probably i'm i'm very open uh, to talk right now also the maximum intake what we get from for my hotels and resorts is always from double ihm thank you so much thank you so much for your support as always thank you so much thank you thank you dr bose oh so that was hot to hot ladies and gentlemen a conversation with ceo rosie hotels and resorts mr kush kapoor and joining in dr bose chairman ceo iihm hotel school from calcutta that you know that's all for today in our iihm career studio thank you for logging in thank you to both of you from joining in thank you so much from rosie house and speaking to all of us about careers thank you thank you so much all the best thank you thank you bye bye thank you bye bye